Greetings, welcome to Rifts in absolutely stunning, beautiful places. Today we're in a forest somewhere in Malta and it's beautiful to honour the immortal and incredible king of guitar, Keith Richards. I'm wearing Keith's uh, hat. It's not actually Keith's, it's just one that I bought when I was in San Francisco that looks a lot like Keith's hat. I don't look as cool wearing it, but I thought out of respect it made sense. I'm also wearing Big Trouble in Little China, the greatest movie of all time in space, bar none. It's a kung fu action horror comedy. And I think that sums up the Rolling Stones music. <laughs> if you didn't know, the Rolling Stones just released a new album called Hackney Diamonds. And there's a tune on it, uh, which is really cool. It's almost kind of Queens of the Stone Age vibe. And it features Paul McCartney on the bass. So I thought, you know what? I have to teach this to you guys. Um, it's in an altered tuning. It's really, really easy to play. If you're a beginner intermediate, I think you're gonna love this tune. So this is Bite My Head Off by the Rolling Stones featuring Paul McCartney from the new album, Hackney Diamonds. We're gonna tune to open G. Here are all of the notes you need. So actually, as it happens, Keith just removes this string. I don't think he does for this tune, but ordinarily, he just cuts this off. So this, you can tune down to a D. Then the A string is tuned down to a G. But then the D string is exactly the same. It's a regular D string. G string is a regular everyday G string. B string, standard all day long B string. But then the high E is down to a D. So what you get if you play from the A string down is a G chord. What that gives you is incredible simplicity and practicality. Wherever you are putting your hand, you can get a chord from the A string down. For example. Okay, let's start with bite my head off. We're gonna go all the way up to the 11 to 9th fret, starting on the A string. Just press your finger down and you only really need to get three strings here to make this chord work. But the cool thing with the tuning is that all of the strings will work. So if you hit an accidental note at the bottom, doesn't make a difference. It's still within the key, it's still within the chord. It's completely fine. And the tune starts off with... If you're new to playing the guitar, uh, what I recommend is down, up, down, up, down, up, all the way through and try and get used to the feeling of moving your hand down and up to the rhythm, hitting the strings when you need to, rather than stabbing at the, at the chord to get the desired effect when you want to. So it starts off. And then that extra note is the 11th fret that I'm hitting with my third finger. So it's one, one, two, three, four, five, then that one note. How easy is that? It sounds great. Then he goes. So we'll do that again. Now we're sliding all the way down and we're gonna put our first finger on the second fret A string. And effectively, it's the same with a couple of little sort of 60s rock and roll tricks, things that just sound really, really cool. They give you that sense of old time, old school rock and roll. And the chord is the same. But we're gonna rock and roll it. So all we're doing is keeping the first finger pressed down. And again, you only really need the A, the D and the G string. Sorry, this is now a G string, but I'm referring to it as an A string. This, this third finger is gonna come on and off of this fourth fret D string. So we start with it off, and then you can put it down. We call that rock and roll. It's not where the term comes from, but it certainly is a rocking and rolling motion of the, the hand. And in a way, you can kind of just move the wrist to enable it if you don't wanna to have to move the finger all the time. It's a combination of the two, really. So, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. 
Now what you notice I did here was a little bit of bass movement, nothing quite as exciting as Paul McCartney does in this tune with his modified uh, Hofner bass with an incredible fuzz circuit, but it's still quite cool. So you've got this rock and roll. So I'm going from this second fret on which is now a D string to my fourth fret and then back up to the chord. So here's how this chord sounds when it's completed and I'll just break it down super slow for you. Now actually what Keith is doing is a whole bunch of um, changes, improvisations within this chord. He doesn't really play it the same at any point throughout the song. There are certain things you can do in this chord that are sort of mainstays of rock and roll and blues that he's incorporating. So what I'm showing you is the first version, a sort of standardized version, but it's never the same and you should really feel free to improvise because it's definitely what the necromancer of rock would do. <laughs> That's the intro, I'll play it for you in one go, nice and slow. Don't forget, it starts off with just coming straight in. And then it misses that first beat and comes in on the end. So the pre-chorus and chorus section is really, really easy. It's the same chord, we're just gonna move it to one, two, three, four different places. Check this out. Starting on the second fret. We've got two frets to the fourth fret. Back to the second. And here you can improvise. You can play any of these fourth fret notes. It's kind of fun. See what I'm doing? It's just any of these notes will sound cool. Back up to the fourth. Then we go to the seventh. Then he goes up to the 11th to ninth. And then back down to the second. Just to make sure it's really easy to see what I'm doing, my incredible wife is gonna film over my shoulder. I'm gonna get low so it's easier. And you'll see everything from a sort of bird's eye player's perspective. I got you. So there you go, a little bit of rock and roll royalty for you. Go check the tune out, go check the album out. Have a great day. Please like, subscribe, take it easy. Chappers out.